It is the Anfield wrap. Neil Atkinson, Rob Gutman and Phil Blundell to talk about Everton 1, Liverpool 3 or more accurately the other way round. And I think the most important <laughs> thing to say, Liverpool 3, Everton 1, the most important thing to say, Rob, is we're doing, this, we're doing this on Sunday morning. Uh, everyone's had a drink. Uh, Not yet. Well, no, everyone's had a drink yesterday. He's soaked, dr- still drenched, saturated. Uh, in, in, suspect I probably wouldn't pass a breathalyzer at the minute. Yeah, that's the way in which this one goes. It's fair to say that Liverpool, the town was absolutely bouncing last night. Um, Liverpool were never really bouncing. If I want to do a, a, a soft link, Rob, in that. We were good, but we, were, we never really had to be great except in moments. We were great in moments in the game. But, but apart from that, we were, we were just simply better than them. We were just a good side. Yeah, you sensed early on that man for man, every individual was prepared to show their quality and felt that that would be enough. It was only really Emre Chan. I, it's interesting. Emre, Emre Chan sets our tone without being. You know, he was the victim of violence, but but his but his energy and passion was set a tone. I think which allowed a lot of the rest of them to sort of express themselves in the way in the different ways that they can as a team. Some of it's silky, like Coutinho and Mane. Some of it's just focused and robust, like Lovren and Lucas. But yeah, you, you're right. It, we didn't... The, the, we felt like... I, I suppose it felt like we always had another gear. The minute they equalised, I thought, yeah, I can see us going up the other end and scoring. I felt we would... I felt we were going to push on from 1-0, but for their... But for the treatment of Emery Chan, because I thought he was the pivotal figure in the early phase. Yeah, I would completely, completely agree with that. We, I mean, it really was as simplistic as saying we're just better at them than football. Yeah. It's... They've got one genuine difference making in that team and we basically stopped him from getting the ball and he couldn't therefore do anything. Apparently, he didn't have a shot on target. The Premier League's top scorer did not have a shot on target in the game of football. A big, big game of football. And for us to be able to do that says quite a lot about the organisation, the midfield and the shift that everyone's put in. And I think he, there was a real sort of a grit to the performance as well as... Because I don't think it was a... An exhibition of free flow and football from Liverpool yesterday. I thought there was a lot of fight and battle, and it sort of that was just how the game pans out. There was, there was, but when we wanted to, we seemed to be able to play. Free oh yeah, play. yeah, absolutely. But I, I mean, I, it, what I mean by that is, I I've seen us play better, get the ball down, and play better football than this season a number of times. It was a, it was a, it's a derby, so it was a battle, but we not quite to I the think, extent where it was all out warfare and we had to like I, I think throw we, tackles in all the time. I was going to say, I think we play better in, if you look at the sides, if you want to say that Evan is seventh in the top seven, and I want to come on and talk about that because I still don't think that's a question that's answered. But if you want to say that Evan is seventh in the top seven, um, and by what I mean by that, by the way, is whether or not they're seventh in the top seven or the top of the bottom, uh, the bottom four. I think they're on their own, but that's it. I think they're on their own. I think, that's, I think they are marooned, and I think it's an interesting position for them to be in. But separate to that, is I think you know, for instance, I think at home we played better against Chelsea, better against Spurs, better against City, better against Arsenal. We probably only played worse than that against United, and United come with a very specific game plan at home because we didn't have to play that well. And I think that's the from the way, from the point where Mane scores, but even before then. I remember thinking, after about five minutes, I remember thinking, we're not going to lose this and we're probably going to win it. And then Mane scores and I think we're almost certainly now going to win it, but we're definitely not going to lose it. And like you, when when they equalised, I just thought, well, we're just probably just going to go back up the other end in a minute and get one. Yeah. And that's a really strange feeling in a football match. I don't think I've actually had that in a game at home for Liverpool all season in terms of mm. It theoretically being a bit of a contest, but me just thinking that's it was almost like watching a, watching a, a horse race where the favourite is you know all the way around the favourite just got the legs to ease away and win by three lengths if it needed to it win by ten. There's no but there's no way in which it's that anything's going to hurt it. Yeah, you could see the sh- the shape of the game that there was going to always be enough space for us to play in without it be, without them being suicidally high up the pitch the way say Tottenham were there was always enough space and they and the, it was very clear early on that their tactical plan was really really inept and I, I feel I felt for Lukaku because uh the only ball they had for him was hit at his tit towards his head they hit I counted something like seven or eight diagonal balls towards his head in the entire it's game. game and Lover, yeah, no, Lovren wins seven out of them, and one of them is a 50 50, I think, and Lucas clears. The only other tactic they had was to try and get um, Baines in some space, and Baines was their most potent attacking threat in the, by far in the entire game, I thought. Uh, and that's why you felt we weren't in any great danger because you thought, well, Leighton Baines is not blessed with huge pace. We did let him go a couple of times, and he did create threat, but I thought it, that's really all we had to manage. And the rest of it was about let us come out with the ball and once... Or t- I mean, the Coutinho goal, it looks like a piece of 
mercurial genius, what, a, a moment that separates four players. No, it wasn't. He it was walked one, from the he, halfway he line. He could have done it box. four times in that, four, in that match, twice before he does it, and once after he does it. Does he almost get to a point where he can does it, do it again? In fact, once he forces a, quite a decent save from Robles, the other two times he's only just tackled. So, he, you know, that he has a chance to score that wonder goal four times so it says something. Um, I think what Rob's driving at there, Phil, and I'm with him 100%, is that their selection and approach, the extent to which it plays into our hands, I, I couldn't believe you were telling me, yeah, there was the rumours going around and you were telling me what you th- the, the scene that you did. And I was trying to think, this makes no sense. And and then when I actually saw it in the flesh, it made even less sense. My arguments when I was trying to go, well, maybe if he plays them as a proper two, Lukaku and Lewin, mm. uh, they could scare our centre centre halves a little bit and make us play, you know, if they just play two on two against us. But they didn't even do that. They managed to, to take Calvert Lewin into a completely different part of the pitch. I still don't really know where he played. No, I don't think he played. I don't think he knows. I don't think. I, I don't think he knows. Yeah, no, I, he, it feels like he went on the pitch and it was like, I just got on the pitch. It was like on a Sunday morning when you basically have, if you're playing up front on a Sunday morning, you have a word with the other lad you're playing up front with and you go, which side you want? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what it looked like. A free Because it just didn't look like he had a particular... <laughs> No, it didn't, like it didn't, a, a, an actual remit of this is what you do. No, and, and Barkley himself, Barkley ends up taking a position on the pitch, which I mean, is, which I is think, nowhere near anything. To, to be fair to them, I think they miss Coleman an enormously. Like, I think he's there's an argument that he's possibly their most important player because he is a one man right hand side, and if you take him away, it then means that you've got a player nowhere near as good as him trying to do half the job that he's doing, and that half the job is you're getting less at your right back. You then needing Ross Barkley to play in a completely different position. You need in a, a large number of things to happen simply by one player not being there. The bizarre thing for me is I don't understand why he's looked at that and gone right. I'm going to play three five two anyway. Oh, how how his answer becomes also playing the, the lad on on the right hand side being a, a player who Evertonians rate as a centre back as a young centre back in the yeah. future yeah. who's currently getting a few games at right back. And this is why for me I don't think it was three five two. And I'm I'm going to talk to Sean Rogers about this on the on uh, the review show because I don't actually don't I think he's played five at the back and yes, I think that everyone gets to, everyone gets to sit around and glory it and say oh you, you know because because it's a bit voguish at the minute if Chelsea are playing 3-4-3 three, three, and there was talk oh, he's gone with 3-4-3 three, three. for me he's either gone 5-2-3 three, or 5-3-2 because yeah. that's a back five if you're playing it, footballers make positions if you're playing a lad whose future in the game is at centre back he's not a right mid he's he, got not a fo- he got forward quite a bit he got forward more than you would expect from one he was playing it's, as a he, right back in a fire to get forward, though, I think. It, it only just, but if you actually look on the... I'm sorry to be smug about this. If you actually have a little look on the uh, the named heat maps, okay. th- their, their full-backs are no more advanced than ours. Okay. Across the pitch. So, obviously, you know, in the same way that, for instance, your full-backs end up playing in line. Would you not expect that? Oh, we probably, we probably did more attacking than Everton. Would you yeah, know? of course I'd expect that, not? but that's my point. My point, though, is that you can say, you can try and glorify but, but this. I mean, in terms way. of, is that not us pinning them back as opposed to a little bit, them but, being... There by choice, but that's. But I think I think that the way in which you, if you select those players in those positions in that game, you're effectively saying I'm playing a back. You're not playing midfielders. Is my point. My point is yeah. that he isn't playing wide midfielders. I'll I'll accept that with Coleman. Maybe you could you could argue if Coleman was playing there, well, it, he he can do he can do both. But when you actually, I even think with Baines, I just think that their their best outlet was their left back. Yeah, is where I end up with this. Genuinely, where I end up with this in the same way that we've had games where our best left back outlet is our left back in in Milner. You just end up with that being the outlet ball, and that's why he looks the most and dangerous. Then, and then the thing is, the thing is with that, the problem we've then got is that if you're out, your best outlet is your left back. The idea of him having to ping balls into Lukaku, and that is nowhere near how you get the best out of Romelu Lukaku. You don't get the like people think because he's like six foot three and built like a house that the best thing to do is put the ball up to him and he'll bully a centre half. It's not his game. So if you're reducing them to that, you're reducing his his efficiency massively and. What's what's stunning about them is there's there's so little quality on the ball. Uh, that's why Baines for me stands out. At least he's got that left foot which can open a the proverbial can of can of whatever's. I mean, okay. So, so you're Marrow. looking around the team, and I'm, I mean, I think Tom Davis played <laughs> what you know, don't open cans, cans of beans, left feet. Is that the, the cliche? Anyway, Tom Tom Davis is good. Never but, understood the opens cap. By the way, for for, for overseas listeners, so you yeah. yeah, there's a lot. He's got a left foot that can open a can of beans. Is the sort of thing that used to be said a lot. Yes. In why why does why can only people with left feet do it? It's mental. Why is it? Why it's like a. a um, Educated left foot. Yeah, an educated. No left one's foot. got an educated right foot. No, no, he's got an educated left. Foot. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, we could go down this digression. For we could probably do an hour on this actually. Lane if you really want. Being being sodden left foot <laughs> was uh, was all that Everton had. I think. What's your sauce on this one? Yeah, hey. um, 
That's all that they really had. I mean, you know, you're waiting for Barkley to do something that, that you think that's quality. I think he could be waiting until he's about 32. Yeah, so do I. Yeah, 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 he has his... He becomes you know, like Danny Murphy did in a way. <laughs> but he was at Fulham and then he realised he was Jan Mulby. I mean, disappointed, <laughs> but, but done okay for a number of years. Um, yeah, I just... I, I couldn't see where their quality was going. I agree, Neil, I think it was five at the back and I think that enabled... But not a... But it wasn't even a bus-parked five that, 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 that caused us any yeah, There were any gaps problems. all over the place. But it was ridiculous. It wasn't like they were a coiled spring yeah. ready to counter-attack. They were... They were they, it was rubbish. They were, they were yeah. stretched over the pitch. The only out ball was a long ball to a man who didn't want a long ball, as you said. I just didn't... I think the, the best example of the the way it was... Have a look on the third goal where Jagielka is. Oh, God. Go and have a look. It's incredible. He's about... He's, play, he's basically playing the left side and centre-half. He's about 25 yards away from Ashley Williams, who was playing in the middle of the three. What's it's absolutely... It's astonishing. What's amazing for that goal is Coutinho and, and Origi do obviously do very well, but at the key moment where they link up, they both get it slightly wrong. Origi it goes too soon and Coutinho plays it just behind him. But Origi's able, Origi able to go, okay, I'll just wait for it to roll in front of me now. And, and then, oh, well, look, the keeper's a dickhead as well. Yeah, yeah but this is the thing, this is the thing you say doing. this, the ball, I mean, just, the ball and the finish and what Coutinho and Origi are doing basically irrelevant if the fella in goal is going to go, yeah, oh, there's a dog, I'm going to chase the dog. <laughs> It's not often you notice how it, it, the opposition's defending and goalkeeping are. are you, when it's sort of on that level, not only he, he hasn't spilt it, but the keeper, he's on his penalty area when this. It's ridiculous, isn't it? He's like, he's, he's, so run, he's trying to, he's trying to like run at someone who's on the edge of the bo box without realizing that. Origi could have just laid the ball off to the right. There's a man over as well, it's and mad. if he really comes out and gets it, he, he's just given someone an open goal as well. I feel I have to add the other cliche, taking nothing away from Origi's finish, because he does really, really well there, Origi. And what I like, yeah, but he just kicked the ball down the middle of the goal. I, I, know, I was. <laughs> I know. reckon I would have saved that. He did it. He did it with some. He did it with. He did it with in the style of a forward who's used to scoring goals, and he hasn't. Yeah, he been, and he hasn't. Theory. And he hasn't been that guy recently. Mm. I think. You know what? We don't know what's going to happen. Be, it would be really easy to play the game that the goalkeeper wants you to play in that scenario, like to go for that corner, <laughs> because he's so, you must be. You know, there must have been something in his head going. Well, he's going there anyway, so maybe. <laughs> yeah, I might, I might try and beat this lad here uh, as opposed he to was, just kicking it in his head. He was thinking things, I think he was overthinking things, Joel Robles, on all the goals. <laughs> Someone's, there's a great little uh, video I've seen on YouTube of, from behind Robles' goal for all of them. Yeah, I've seen really that as well. looks very, very bad. I mean, he makes a good save from Coutinho early on, and I think he makes very another very good save from Trent Alexander late on. Yeah. But his positioning the, on all the, the goals. The first goal's great when he basically sees the ball roll past him, and then there must be something in his mind that takes you in. Hang on, about in that game in December, the ball at the post, and then someone tapped it in. I best go and try and chase it just in case that happens again. It's and then reverse. he realised it's going in, and he's ah. Oh, well, it, oh, it's okay. like that goal in a way because it's, then it goes in. It's a reverse pass into the net. Yeah. It's a fucking brilliant goal. What that Mane does there. I mean, there's, there's two challenges. He's one through his strength and determination. He gets past the first man. Is it semi in the air? The, the touch. He it around thinks the side. over. Is it Davis? He doesn't yes, the ball it's over. Brilliant. And Fantastic. then his pace gets him ahead of a man who was ready to break his leg again. Then he sh then he faces up two of them, watches the keeper not knowing where he is, and goes and just does that reverse pass into the net. I mean, it was a sense. I thought at that moment you go, Marne, he's he, again we use this word trajectory with young youngish footballers, but he's on a path to something approaching world class here. And I think his first twelve months, was it first nine months, are kind. of... I don't think they're far off Suarez's first nine months. We, our view of I Suarez, mean, there's, there's Suarez, Suarez was better, there's Suarez better. was off the scale in his last twelve. There's months. an argument is better. I actually. think there's an argument he's better. Yeah, you but he's also playing in a better team than Suarez did, so it's hard to. It's hard to really, you know, Luis yeah, Suarez, Suarez, yeah. Yeah, Suarez didn't have Phil Coutinho and Roberto Firmino to play in front with. He had no. Andy Carroll and Dirk Hout. Uh, yeah. No disrespect to Dirk Hout, but the fact to we're an extent Andy Carroll, but they're not as good as Firmino and Coutinho, are they? No, but we're talking, but we're talking in the same in the same breath, and I think Absolutely. that's yeah, and, I and without me. being the dickhead that called Mane Suarez, and then he turned out not to be after his first season. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I, ju I just feel what he what he's doing for us at times is unbelievable, yeah. and and it. I'm just praying that this this there's not a horrible sting in our in our derby hubris here because your knee injuries. The, I, I I woke up going anyway, um, cruciate. You know, it, it, I he don't apparently think he walked out the uh, he walked so, through all, the mix zone unaided with no boots with no, I, I no boot on or anything. I, I mean, I'm not saying he's that he's fine. But. From Joe Gomez being a, an innocuous knee injury just a week after Klopp joined, and then suddenly he's out for the rest of his life. No, that was announced straight away, wasn't it? Well, I think. Yeah, I don't but know. even, even still, that much. was in training as well. We didn't see it happen either, did we? No, no it was in England under twenty-one. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, of course it was. But 
I look, I, it's a fingers crossed it. But having said, I, actually, the, the reason I mentioned that in this at this juncture is because I think Origi's, if we are to face the rest of the season without Martin, and at the moment I think that's kind of a 50 50 thing, even though we're hoping not. Mm. Um, I think Origi hitting that that strike at that moment may be the thing that that gives him the confidence to therefore plug that gap and gives us a chance of having a, an interesting finish to the season. Because I think we'd have been in trouble maybe, but it would have been a major blow if Mane and without cover. Well, undoubtedly so. It's, um, I mean, I think you've sort of told the story, but it's interesting you actually pointed out the quality point, Rob, because it's something I, I genuinely agree with. The, 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 the difference in... Just and simply in, in, in playing the ball, if anything, I think we lose our way a little at 1-0 and that it's almost too easy for us at times. Playing it up to the front, so there's like three great touches between some combination of Firmino, uh, Coutinho if he goes one way, Manny if he goes the other, and then sort of going back towards either Ronaldo or Chan. There'd be sort of three great touches and suddenly everyone's in space. And I actually was felt Liverpool was showboating almost a little bit at 1-0. I thought it was just I, I thought it was just almost too easy the way in which they were able to pull them round. Yep. And it's the equaliser. And then the fact that Coutinho goes and makes it 2-1, that sort of snaps Liverpool's full-on professionalism and graft yep. into the fray. I also I also thought, I said this at the be- beginning of the show, I, the Emery Chan situation, he plays... I, I was screaming at Klopp to get him off. Oh, yeah, uh, after about in the first screaming. 10 minutes. I was yeah. you know, like... A, <laughs> he couldn't run. I, yeah, he couldn't run. No, he, he couldn't, couldn't run. He could barely move. In fact, he, he clips one round the side to Coutinho, uh, yeah. and, it, and it's because he can't actually move. Yeah. He just, all he can do is use his instinct to put a lovely pass yeah. through to Coutinho, and I thought, he can't run now. From being this... I mean, I, I can exa- you can exaggerate a bit, but for the, uh, seven minutes up to the goal, he's sensational. And he's... He, He's sensational, really. I think he's running the he's running the game and he yeah. puts us on that front foot. But he didn't. I, didn't, like... I didn't think he'd come out the second half. No, I was stunned. And he seems he's, he's by the end he's he's, he's beating men on the right hand side, that. pulling one back for Trent. He's, he's absolutely yeah, by fine. about thirty five forty. I actually thought he was he was okay. It was he, he was walking he, around holding his back. I thought he was walking around like my back's gone a bit here. But I'm, it, he was like moving much freer by half time than he was after what fifteen minutes when I was looking at him like it was effectively like having ten men. He's going to know about it this morning when he tries yeah. to get out of bed, Emery. <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's going black and blue and, and like he's done t- 10 rounds with somebody who's a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> All the cliches I'm really trying them out today. You like trying them out. But, no, but that was the thing for me, Phil, was, was that there was a the, 1-0 that was almost too easy and they, they, they were clipping it around. It goes 1-1 they just go up the other end and make it 2-1. It's annoying to keep concede from a set piece in general. I it's going to happen. Did but that, was it just me? I thought we defended that really strangely. Yeah, it was really weird. Amp- there was so was much space. Like, I, I, three blues on the edge of the six yard box. It was more that we didn't have anyone in the six yard box. Yeah, me, long... I don't really understand. I, I think that's a bizarre way of. Yeah. The, Do you know what it was? It, it's, it might not be the worst idea of defending the corner, but you absolutely have to win the header. You can't not. It, you can't not win that first header. I have a kind of a theory. Okay. If the theory is the right description. If you if teams do a near post corner correctly. They're almost undefendable. Yeah, yeah, and that's true. It, and they're really hard to do well. But Everton get it right. It's a really yeah. well whipped ball. He gets the best Which glance. Causes chaos. He, he gets the them. best low glance on it. And the problem is, is I think as the ball's coming at a good height, I think the instinct of the defenders is to go, "Oh shit, that can't happen." And they're all attracted to the ball. They don't play the second ball in that situation because you're terrified of what the second ball is. I, if, it, if, if we hadn't conceded so many other shit set piece goals, I'd let that one slide. But it's really, I've tried, watched it a few times. Like it's hard to go, definitely your fault. You should have done this. But I know what you mean. It's like it is people, I've heard a few people going, well, why is Can, Chan, Emery Chan not going with Jagielka? And I said, well, because he's not supposed to. If you're defending something zonally, you don't chase the man who's gone and run the ball. I mean, I think someone on the front post probably needs to attack the ball better. Yeah, I think that's, that's it. That's how you cure it. But that is. It's a hard one to really. Well, what you do is if you, prevent. if you if you you put a man in front and a man behind is how you defend the near post corner. But yeah, but that's a risk in itself because you're very and maybe that's what we we did we did and did wrong because if you, you you try that tactic and then you fail at it, and you, and the, but also the trajectory often with a near post corner it, it comes relatively high the other side so the keeper's got a yeah. fighting chance of being in the mix it skims low so the keeper's got no chance. It's a weird one I have to say. I think, I think people sort of not necessarily talking about this set piece particularly, but. There is a chance that a ball will come into your box. There's nothing you can do about it, and yeah. people always have to find someone to blame when there isn't always. Not necessarily. That I think, yeah, I think I... but there, you, you, sometimes you have to just have to go. 
can go. That was the Fair least point. of our bad set pieces yeah. this season, it, I think. Yeah, I think, I, I think that that's fair. And then, as I say, Coutinho scores a lovely goal, um, gets the ball, um, and also just in general looked bright. I think he looks bright partially because he realises you've got the absolute beating of everybody around him, which always helps. Yeah. Um, but I think there's also, in general, he just looked a little sharper, a little bit more at the races than he has done in recent weeks, Rob. I think quite a lot. I think his eyes, pro- not just his eye for, shoot, for shooting, is whether... Coming back from the injury, he clearly lost some confidence and it had cost him half a yard and half a, a milli, millisecond's worth of decision-making time. And for a player a player who plays on the edge in a way like Phil Coutinho, I think that's vital. Um, I think going to Brazil and having a change of, of scene and, and it obviously coming off... also playing against the playing for Brazil against a team they are much, much better than. It all, it all helps. Well. Mean, you could argue that the signs... Given the opportunity to get a bit of confidence back. I, I think so. And you could argue there were signs against to, Man as City. As opposed to 11 lads running around trying to kill him. Yeah. The, pre- the, the, the hurly-burly of the Premier League is not the best place I mean, to try to South American football is not exactly like cuddles and love and stuff like that, but it's still playing against players he's level levels above yeah I don't know how well he played in that game but I saw the goal and, yeah. and, and when that hit the net yeah. that's got to have done something for him um and I think when it hit the net yeah I, I thought he was that was that was magical Coutinho you know we've all spent the last few weeks going where's the where's the real for Phil Coutinho I'd even got to that sort of subconscious phase where you go if they bid 70 million for him I don't want him to go but you know if I, it'll, it shit happens now after yesterday no I, I, now I'm back to crying if he went yeah I thought he was fantastic yesterday he showed glimpses of it w- without being anywhere near his best against City. There were, there were some passes there which, which hinted at you go. I think it's interesting to look back at the phase he's had where he has been last at times, but there have also been moments where you go, mm, Phil Coutinho shit still does some stuff <laughs> at a high well, he's level. He's good at football. I mean, that's the thing. He's, yeah. he's literally good at football. I think he's not... I, I think he, you, you often get less than the sum of all of his good at football parts, and that's what I find quite frustrating I know watching him. Uh, mm. You know, you see him do certain little bits and pieces, and you want him to join it up a little bit better. But I think the other thing that came through yesterday, partially again, we're going to get on to the talking about the the getting kicked. But I think the very fact that it was the sort, it was a Merseyside derby, the fact that there's you could see there was a huge togetherness from Liverpool in terms of Phil, the plan. This is how we win the game. The players on the pitch, this is how we're not going to let various factors get to us. Then the realisation of the gulf between them and Everton, I think that obviously helps. And that's why, whilst the showboat, and I don't like to see it, I, I thought at 1-0, I actually think it helps them to, to, to go up the other end and make it 2-1 and then sort of see that half out with comfort. Because the thing is, we're, we're just well better than these. And as a collective, they were all onto the, we're well better than these. And then and that's where I think, for instance, things like Lucas playing in this one for with, with one eye on the impact we know he has on Coutinho and Firmino. You just felt there was this huge togetherness, I thought, amongst the Liverpool players all the way through the game. And it's huge credit to the manager and to the players themselves. I mean, I, I, as I said before, there was, there was serious grit and battle in that performance yesterday. I thought, I thought Lucas was absolutely fantastic. I think that you could argue that's the best game he's ever had for Liverpool. I don't think I've ever seen a player win as many balls as that, whether it's in the air or on the ground. It was they had the ball, they do something, and then oh, he's got it back again. It was ast- it was honestly it was astonishing. If if Javier Mascarano does what he does yesterday. There's people talking about it for three weeks. Yeah, Fingolo Kante does what he did yesterday. He's got a documentary made about him on Radio Five. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I it's, thought it was it was that he was that good. I I was worried coming into the game because he's not played in that position in a big game. I don't think for a while he's played in defence. I looking at the team uh, team sheet. I I half wonder whether Klopp was going to go for a, a match up with Koeman and put him in a three at the back. And I thought, is he? Is he going to play? Is he going to play so deeply, effectively as a third centre half? Anyway, but no, he's very much ahead of Lukaku in filling in the hole. He was sensational, really. I mean, to, I mean, you know, he's not thirty-five. We still he's probably still talk about like he is, but, but he's about. There, he's there are games. There are games where you look at Lucas, especially maybe you know. If someone said Lucas was going to play in that position away at Stoke next week, I don't care how well he played here, I would fill me with concerns, right? I, I don't know why. Maybe not entirely rational because he doesn't seem to have the legs in games that sometimes get stretched over a period of time. But these these cameos, I mean, he never he's, he's, he still surprises. And he should stay at Liverpool indefinitely now. It's daft to think. I, I don't think it would suit him to go even to, into a slower league like Italy where after 10 games he could find that maybe this slight lack of consistency that's in his game since his multiple injuries... But no, let's section. I think I said his career. He was just fantastic yesterday. A massive thing about sort of using him as a an, an example of what we should really be trying to do this summer. There's an argument we shouldn't actually tell and sign sell anyone this summer, bar probably Daniel Sturridge, maybe Kevin Stewart. 
I think we should probably try and keep everybody else because the squad isn't that deep. No, definitely. So if you add three or four really good players to what we've got now, you've then, got, you've then <laughs> probably, it's he's not it's not football reasons why he's not here, but this, yeah. that's a completely other discussion that will, you know, what divides the internet, doesn't it? Mamadou Sacco, like pretty much nothing. Else. We're going to get 50 million for him, by the way, yeah, by the oh, end yeah. of the season. <laughs> yeah, anyway. He's so, better than Van Dijk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically the... You add three or four really good players to this team, you've improved your starting eleven. You can then use players like Lucas who can come in and do things like that mm. yesterday. You need players to come in and be able to put in that level of performance, but also don't start every week. Because you need you need options. You need players. And at the minute, we aren't in a position where we can really afford to lose that many players. I think the fact that he liberated Emery Chan as well by be, by doing his job well. I mean, effectively, Chan plays Lalana's position, doesn't he? In a sense, arguably, yeah, yeah. Yeah. in a very, very different way. But we needed some one of those three to be aggressive front foot in the, in the first in the line of the press, and that's what Chan did. But you know, Chan was the was the go to deputy for Henderson. So, to, and there's been criticisms of him further ahead of the ball when we worry about him turning and what's going on behind him. But but I, I think I, Lucas allowed him to play. I, I don't know if it's the nature of the game, but I actually thought what, when I was watching it yesterday that the the Chan issue. And it's interesting that the manager does what he does. The manager chooses to basically keep Wijnaldum as Wijnaldum. Yeah, whatever happens. And that's what he's done. He's thought, I'll keep Wijnaldum as Wijnaldum. Mm. And then he's brought Lucas in and Lucas is Henderson. And he's made Chan go and be Lallana. Previous weeks, Lallana's Lallana. Wijnaldum's Wijnaldum. And Chan, Chan does the Henderson thing. And again, he does it differently, just as he does the Lallana thing differently. He does mm. it differently, but he does it. And I think all of a sudden, while I was watching that, I was thinking, yeah, <laughs> Chan's sort of like the thing he doesn't suit. Chan can do a variant on what you want uh, Henderson to be doing. He can yeah. do a variant on what you want Lalana to be doing. But the actual halfway house one is what doesn't suit him when he's got to do a bit of both. He almost, he almost feels as though he wants the clean trajectory of, no, this is what I do today. The idea where I think all the performances of chance that I've seen across the season where I've ended up going, I'm not sure about Emre, you know, I'm worried about Emre, mm. has been when he's actually been asked to do a bit of both. Yeah. I think that's been the problem. The yeah. problem's been when it's been do a bit of both. I think it's really interesting. It's mad. I think, because... it's, I think it's a bit like Gerard in this respect, in as much as I think Gerard was caught between stools as a midfielder. If, I mean, this is to try and criticise the mighty Stephen Gerrard in a sense. Gerard was freed by managers who said to him, you can go and attack. He was, But he was also, right at the end of his career, I think, reborn. And at the start. And at the start, but specifically at the end under Brendan Rodgers, he was reborn by being able to say, just sit, you know, just sit and be that, be that fulcrum. So he wasn't caught, he wasn't caught between stools. And I think Chan is, is that kind of brief, that in the midfield who needs that kind of brief too. I think, I think it's really interesting. I think it's quite a, it's a strange thing that, but that's, you know, that's what some footballers want and what some footballers need. And I actually think it begins to solve the, the question of when Phil's talking about sort of the summer, what's Chan going to do for us? Well, there's, there's a strong argument that what Chan does for us is he's effectively almost first midfield sub. And mm. that's fine, by the way, because first midfield sub will get as many games as everybody else in midfield because of the, yeah. nature, of the, the nature of the sport. Um, but, that, you know, that can make a little bit of sense to you that if you, you can give him that. Like, to the extent that if everyone was fit bar when Aldum and we hadn't made any, any additions or any changes, I'd actually be tempted to sit Chan and move Henderson, if mm. you know what I mean, and yeah, have Henderson yeah. do the both job. Yeah. Rather than rather than having having worry about that, I, I think better more legs in Henderson than Shannon, you know. So yeah, I think that makes that, sense, that, yeah. exactly. And I think he. I, but anyway, I mean that's a separate sort of a separate conversation. Uh, what forward. you're saying is is that Chan can't cover Wijnaldum, but Henderson could. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Mm. So, but I'm saying that it's you think the one thing you think if you're arguing that you think that Chan can cover Henderson and that Chan can cover Lallana, is you end up saying well Chan should definitely obviously be able to cover Wijnaldum, really whereas no. it does that doesn't seem to be the case no. uh, as it stands. I mean, you know, things can change, uh, and also it's, it, it is worth pointing out that the game yesterday maybe suits the idea of someone like Chan covering Lallana, whereas if you maybe you know if it is a proper low block, sit deep, you maybe are looking for a bit more guile than than Emre's um, perpetual battering ram. Uh, approach, but I mean that's a separate conversation in a few in, in different ways. One thing I want to say is uh, that they we go three uh, one as we've discussed. Uh, I think Manila makes an excellent save with three one. The deflection, yeah, it's, 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 it's a deflection. Yeah. It's, he, he gets it so far away from his goal. Uh, he obviously gets it away from his goal, but he gets it so far away from his goal as well. I, th I, I think it's his defining contribution across the course of the game. Yeah, he had he had a good game. I mean, I the, the things that frustrate me, Manila is. More than the, uh, the 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 key errors, although they're not they're no picnic, is is when I think he breeds indecision in his defence. But uh, 
in recent weeks, he has been very decisive. There's no, there's no industry. He looks at competing. If you've not watched Mignolet before and you just walk into the, you know, into the film of his life at this stage, I think you're seeing a very competent keeper think, in action here. He made an important stops there and was comp he's composed. I think the best way of looking at him is that if we'd have signed him in, what was it, December when he came back in, if that was his first game for Liverpool, you wouldn't be going into the summer going, we desperately need a new goalkeeper. No, definitely Whereas not. we pop, I mean, we, you've got to be realistic and think you would probably like to see someone who isn't him in goal next season. But it's not, I don't think it's as not obvious, more... Um, it, do, it doesn't seem... In, it's it do, not yeah. as imperative no. that we find another goalkeeper immediately. There's, there are better goalkeepers out there, but what, we, what I just can't be bothered with is just buying someone who's not better than him. Well, this I wanted to go. I wanted to push on this. I mean, not least because it actually helps, given the fact that he's at least twice the goalkeeper of the fucking clown opposite to him. Yesterday. And that's the thing. They're and seven. They're seven. They're seven. They're seven. Yeah. And they've got an idiot in goal because the other idiot they had that's they signed in the summer got injured. They, they, they've basically got. I, I think they've, they've got two. They've Jones. got two goalkeepers. They've got two goalkeepers who aren't as good as the lads who I think we've got on loan at, at Huddersfield. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's ridiculous. And I think if you go throughout the way through this, I mean, I was looking at it yesterday, and, and, and in general on this, and I think I, I was, it's sort of picked up on the post-match show with Paco. Uh, it was picked up on there, and I, I think it's worth it's worth banging the drum in the context of this con of this game against Everton because beforehand there was all the talk of Everton closing the gap on Liverpool. There was people who should know better, and I include our own support, some of our own support. For instance, I keep citing that I saw an 11, uh, a Merseyside 11 that had Rob Les in goal and Funes Mori at centre half, and just <laughs> just no way, just no way on earth. Well, no, I wouldn't, wouldn't have, even get on our bench. No, I wouldn't have. I wouldn't have any of their players in our first 11 yesterday, of their 11 in our first 11 yesterday, with the possible exception of Lukaku, and that means you're beginning to have a conversation about the system. Uh, exactly. Lukaku doesn't get in our first 11 because our first 11 has got 66-odd goals and is the biggest goal-scoring team in the division. So I don't care what Romelu's 20 bring, the whole system, as you say, the system. So it becomes a system conversation, but I'll even allow, if I allow Lukaku, apart from that, and it's important to say this, their seventh, so yeah, they've got a couple of injuries. It might be that, for instance, if if they had everyone fit and it was our team yesterday, you might pick Schneider in ahead of Lucas, but as Phil just take, said, Lucas does that job. I'll probably take Coleman. And you, right back, you yeah. might well take. You might take Coleman. You might I not. I think I definitely would. Well, I'm alright. I'm, I'm saying in general, yeah, 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 the yeah, general yeah. sort of conversation. And they're seventh. Mm. And this is, you know, I was looking down the league yesterday and sort of again to use the goalkeeper as an example because we all talk about the goalkeeper a lot. Well, I think Foster's had a decent season at West Brom, but. You, you feel as though he's the sort of keeper who's got to be constantly busy, which may well he's be... Gone, he's like gone that. to a big club before and not done it. Yeah. Mm. You, granted, he played for Manchester United and wasn't very good. Granted, Stoke's shite. Forster at Southampton, shite. Boric at Bournemouth is shite. Gomez at Watford has also failed at a bigger club in terms of Tottenham. Uh, Schmeichel at Leicester, yep, all right, maybe, but he, they're the champions, uh, I hasten to add. Yeah. Pickford's good. Uh, Pickford's, well, Pickford's good because he can kick it, but he's also only about four foot three, yeah. uh, which is going to impede him. But he, I know he looks like he could be really, really good. They're, but they're 20th, for fuck's sake. Yeah, Literally yeah. fucking 20th. He's busy. He's um, a busy lad. Valdez has got, had the career that he's had, but he's obviously now sort of on, on uh, towards the end of that career. He's a butter. Uh, I've got no real sense of the whole keeper. Uh, I can't be bothered with Fabianski. He's at Swansea. Um, at Crystal Palace have had goalkeeping issues all the way through the season. Uh, West Ham have changed the goalkeeper once, and they've now got that Clown Randolph in goal. And then Burnley. Uh, Burnley have got Heaton, who looks he's, really good. Fair enough, he's good. Like, looks really, really good. good. But again, looks like he has to make tons of... He hasn't been yeah. tested yet, where he hasn't got loads and loads to do. My point about this... Caballero. I think, I think you can... But I think Caballero... Well, they're, above, like they're, they're there as well. But I'm using just those bottom sides. Because okay. I, when, when people say... Liverpool's players, when someone's got a downer on a Liverpool lean player and they'll say something like he's mid-table, he fucking isn't. Yeah. He may not be in the end good enough to play for a Liverpool side that goes on to win the title and that's a separate conversation. People have also got this thing that all our players have to be good enough to start every week and have to be good enough to be really, really good and talked about as being fantastic footballers and we've got to have like a fella who doesn't even get on the bench who could get into Manchester City's team or something. It's a bit ridiculous. It's like people talk, been talking about the bench the last few weeks and going, oh, this this looks really, but you know, the bench isn't great. Well, it's not great, but if you're going to look at Arsenal and go, right, rank your players from number one downwards, you've got the number 25 on the bench, which is what we've been doing recently. Yeah. We've been having to use our 25th player, is probably Harry Wilson, and putting him on the bench. No other team is doing that. If Chelsea were doing go and have a look at Chelsea's squad on Wikipedia. So, and, and, and put them, is the put them, not, I'm not saying in terms of squad numbers, I'm talking in terms of like, oh, right. just list the players. Okay, yeah. If you go onto Chelsea's Wikipedia page and have a look who their number 25 would be. Yeah. I don't even think they've got 25 players listed in their first team squad on Wikipedia. No, no, Chelsea's bench at times. There's it's, Chelsea, it's, Chelsea's it's, bench. 
Chelsea's strength has been they've got a really, really good first eleven, which they've hasn't got, got, which hasn't got br- into... They've got 14 brilliant players. And then number 12's great, number 13's yeah. great, and number 14's great. When you day, go to 15, 16, 17... They can bring Willian and Fabregas on as their first two shots. Exactly, exactly. No, and that's the thing. That's that's why they're really good. I agree. I agree with all of that. But then that sort of... When, when you are beginning to have a look at the summer, that means that one of the premiums that we actually do need to be looking at genuinely is fitness. Yeah. Because that's... Um, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, we need to not be... Yeah. Let's not... Let's, and but that, it's that's, not... That's point point is, it's not a squad issue. It's a, we've had quite a lot of players unavailable. Yeah, no, I, I think it, I think if if for different reasons Sturridge and Origi hadn't <laughs> fallen off the cliffs they did for different reasons, mm. or maybe overlapping reasons, I think we'd be banging this title race now. When we needed them in in mid from mid December to the end of January, we were out mining. Coutinho was uh, struggling with injuries. It was a time when you needed to be able to go away from home and grind out a one. Yeah, you, wasn't if it? we had had the Origi of last uh spring and the storage of last spring i think we'd be we'd have we'd have six more points possibly and yeah. we'd be banging this i don't i yes and no my i think you might be i mean six more points i think you know you may be right i i still think i still still think that there's every chance that chelsea win this league with over 92 points and i think if that happens you've got to do a shoulder shrug everyone's got to do a shoulder if, shrug I'm predicting there's, also, there's also a thing that if you are closer to them there's more pressure yeah of course there is of course there is i mean, i just think in general though yeah, i mean no, I, I agree completely this chelsea team they basically won the league when they went when they won what is it 14 on the bounce or whatever yeah, was, I think, that I was think when they won the league there was a guy i want to tell you a story there was this guy who said on a preview show before the weekend that somebody that crystal palace were going to win at chelsea who was it rob his name was Rob. Was it? He, okay. was he, a youngish man. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. But do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know what's weirder? Can we can digress onto the title race for two seconds? Yeah, here? of course. <laughs> what was? Because you're not going to stop me anyway. Back uh, on. What What's interesting is, I don't think I've ever seen champions are so comprehensively champions in a long, long. As in his way, everyone else has been written off. They're they're, they're being given the title so early. In a, in a, it feels like in a good one. Maybe Chelsea two years ago it was happening, but. I thought at some stage, this is going to get to these, the fact that they've been given this title. And that's why that... They start thinking like that. Yeah, and that's what that loony result happens. Now, Chelsea's next four games, they're playing City... Uh, who they play? City, United, and and the Mighty Blues. <laughs> you never know at Goodison under the lights, what could happen? Is it I under the lights? Well, I'm making that yeah, bit up. Um, Feels different. Feels like I mean, a, I, I, a goal I, starts I, being removed. If you're Chelsea don't win any in the next four. 82 points, 83. It's, points. Add, yeah, it's, that's, it's <laughs> the, fifth, the fifth game along. They've got City, then they've got Bournemouth away, Man, Man United away, Southampton at home, and then uh, they play uh, on on Sunday the 30th of April. They play against uh, Everton. Uh, at Goodison Park, Sorry. and yeah, uh, and and you know that's 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 a game of football, and the old lady may or may not be rocking. Uh, <laughs> that girl, yeah, she may or may not be rocking. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, 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 but what I, I my mean, point is more just sort of, um, yeah. If we were a bit closer, then you could sort of begin to go down that route. And I do, I do agree that if you know if if Origi and Sturridge had been able to carry us through January, as I think we were hoping uh, mm. we get, then yeah, we'd be better off. Uh, but anyway, um, I just uh, my my general defence is that of Liverpool's players. Where in, we yeah. were better in every department, better individually, better collectively, and they're seventh. And I'm going to keep saying that they're literally, yeah. the, and yeah, they're not yeah. seventh by a distance. They're 14 points cleared of ninth. Yeah, it's mad, isn't it? <laughs> they, they, it's the biggest seventh <laughs> place win ever. I know it? we were talking about Everton being isolated, but have you seen how isolated West Brom are? Oh God, it's just, it's incredible. Yeah, God, I don't Everton, think I think they're Everyone about they're like, they're like 10 points. Uh, they, there was one stage they were the only team. Who had between forty and fifty? Points. No, that, that, that's the case now. It's mad. How can it? How can there be one team who's got a point you, number in the four, <laughs> points total in the forties? You can see ten teams that's... not getting not hitting the forty point mark. Yeah, <laughs> it's mad. Look at them; they're all marooned on thirty three. <laughs> Everyone in the country yeah. got thirty three points. Well, the thing is, Middlesbrough are playing um, Swansea. Say. Swansea away. If they if they win, do I, no, sorry. If um, I mean, sorry. If Hull beat Middlesbrough. Where they play next Swansea week. win and then Hull win. Yeah. If Swansea beat Middlesbrough and then Hull beat Middlesbrough. Southampton are eleventh and four points off relegation. Now. It's absolutely it's crazy. I, I, so I know this is more. I mean, we're, we're uh, yeah, I, 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 all over the place. Like Stoke, all of a sudden, when we go to Stoke next week, if that happens, genuinely, if if midweek Stoke don't win, uh, Hull win, uh, and Swansea win today, then you are in a situation where Hull are on thirty and Stoke, who we go to next week, if they get beat midweek, uh, they then and they're away from home. I'm not quite sure where. But they're away from home, and they then find themselves on thirty-six points, and they will be six points off the relegation places. With the Reds to face with the Reds to face, and mm. that suddenly becomes a horrible game of football. And all the way through, we've been saying about the running. Well, you know, it looks like it'd be quite kind, and a few of them will be in buckets and spades. No one can go buckets and spades here at the moment. No one. There's only no. there's literally only West Brom in the whole league. You can do the buckets and spades thing. Mm. 
Which thankfully we've got them in two weeks, haven't we? Mm. But then they go and grind a draw out at Man U, don't they? And they beat Arsenal. To play. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, there, I are, there are no easy games, but all these players are fucking rubbish. Is I think the point I'm driving at in comparison to the mighty boys in red. Yeah, that 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 cliche about oh, you don't want to be playing the relegation fighters in the in the round. You literally yeah, you do. do. Yeah, you do. They're shit. You what you do. want to do though is score the first goal against yeah. them and watch their heads fall off. Uh, don't start talking about heads uh, yeah, falling I was off. Gonna say, yeah. uh, Joe Anderson's had to put his back on this morning. Oh, God. Uh, just just Ever- Evertonian heads have fallen off. The bang heads have fallen off. Have you not noticed all week on the social it's media? All week? Saying. It's been for months now. Yeah, for months. They're obsessed with heads. Their go-to metaphor. Yeah, his heads fall off. They love heads falling off. And let's get back onto that because their heads absolutely fell off. Firstly, with the way which they set up the whole back five was because of the fear of our quality and their own weakness. There's no magic in that football team and our whole front three is about magic. And what that turned into was because they were nowhere near getting in the game, Rob, because they have to prove some sort of notion of commitment because being actually brave whilst playing football by retaining the ball, trusting your touch, that isn't an option for them. They've decided it isn't an option for them. Led to so many bad tackles. Yeah, it did, didn't it? It was... um... (laughs) <laughs> it seems hard to say. It's, it's not nice to see. It's not nice, Blues. Don't do it. It's it feels it feels out of out of sync with modern football as well. It feels something really arcane and pointless and a bit. And it never served. I wouldn't mind if it ever served them any uh, any function for them. They've now been doing this for for the for, since nineteen ninety five. And and it's no, there's no sign of it ending. The managers come, managers go, but they find a way of making them dogs of shite every single time. I think a part of it is down to sort of. Just being a bit slow, generally. I think like, it's, being, it's, it's, yeah. it's yeah. not necessarily that it's just utter, mali- utter malice. There's, I, I don't think all of it's down to malice. I think a lot of it is down to they're just flying in and they're a little bit slow. They're fired up, both. Yeah, they're f- definitely they are fired up. The point is they're trying to make a, a tackle and it's not like necessarily the way, but they just get there. You get there a quarter of a second late. I'm not talking about the Lovren one where he should have walked for, mm. like the Tom, the one that Tom Davis got booked for is borderline a bone rattling challenge he comes away with the ball and the whole Everton and then stands up give it yeah. a fist and it, it looks great it, it's just designed to be a little bit aggressive as opposed to actual malice which is what there's nothing wrong with aggression in football it's when it's outright malice that it's a problem and it's not like, like even the, the the Bartley one against Henderson in December I thought it wasn't it was just something he's not very good at I think as opposed I, to him, as opposed to him going out and go right, I'm going to hate him. I think I, I sort of I partially agree with you. From the fact I think I sort of three quarters agree with you completely. If you know what I mean, it's in that I think one of the issues is that the, firstly we're not playing at all well. We, we're watching these lads the better with the ball than we are. Secondly, it's not even whether or not they're fast or slow. It's that I'm coming from because me positioning so weird because they're not, there was a real sense yesterday they didn't know where they were meant to yeah. be. I'm coming from so far away that it was so disjointed. We're all so far apart that suddenly I'm lunging in for something that. You know, as you say, it could, you could be able to tackle it cleanly or win it. You know, you compare that to, for instance, a couple of Lucas's hard challenges on them. They're hard challenges where he comes in, but he knows exactly where he is all the way through. And he's anticipated it. There's one in particular where Barkley tries to do it, do him with a nutmeg on the turn. And Lucas has read it before Barkley was born. Mm. And he just blocks it out and knocks him. And as soon as you, you see it and you can see that Barkley's like, for fuck's sake, when's this going to stop? But I, Sorry, Neil, I, I think that performance from them yesterday, I mean, I just maybe going against my own point, you can look at it as in the context of their DNA in the last two decades, and that's how they play. But I think that, I think that Tottenham result and, and performance was in, was in their heads. I agree with that. From, their problem against Tottenham is they, they go to play it like the proverbial European away and to sit in and be compact and to, 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 to wait for their, cha- their moment. And Spurs are just in their faces. With just, but with controlled aggression in their faces, uh, and they so that I think they're coming to Anfield. They think Liverpool, uh, uh, Liverpool aren't dissimilar to Tottenham. They could come and do the same thing to us, and we could have another chasing, and that would be in a derby as well. So we've got to be in their faces from the get go, and they and they apply that. And I, th- you know, I think his selection of local kids is part of that. I need natural energy and enthusiasm, and and. He wants the word controlled with the aggression, but they're never going to be controlled in a derby, and that's the problem. And we just, you know, we were, sat off them, we waited, we played. We, we, Liverpool, I mean, just keep their heads in these games. Just yeah, That's in our DNA now in derbies. We just keep our heads and play our passes and wait Don't for get them. caught on the occasion, no. which they do. They get, they get so... Not so the Kyriagos the, derbies, well, yeah. I don't think, where we get, we've been caught in the occasion. That was, that was bizarre, that tackle. It was a two-man. They both should have got sent off. Mm. Uh, just anyway, but on the, we're on that. Let's. I want to sort of stick with this for a second because that's again. It's and when you say it seems a bit arcane, I think it does seem a little bit arcane because I don't think 
listen, I think that everyone wants to see, even, you know, right the way across the continent, I think more so in British football, but I think right the way around the continent, people like to see a good tackle, they like to see the ball won. You know, there was lots Ooh. of when the, when Paris Saint-Germain, the lad, sort of tackled and nutmeg Messi at the same time. Everybody loved it, the full, the young fullback who did that for them. And oh, know, yeah. people, get, yeah, people yeah. get carried, you know, it's people want to see that and they want to see, for instance, if you're, if you come up against a Barcelona, you you know, if you if, if you see one of your lads absolutely takes the ball off of Suarez and puts him down at the same time, you'd be going, come on, lads, that's great. More of that, that's what we're going to have to do against these, whoever you are, no matter what, you know, I refuse to believe there's Madrid supporters who aren't banging into Sergio Ramos, r- rattling people yeah. when they're playing against Barcelona. But for me, bravery is is being prepared to, when you win it, firstly, try to win it so you've still got the ball. Mm. So you come out the other yeah. side with the ball, you clip it, so now you're on the counter-attack, you're being able to play your football. Bravery is also being prepared to take a touch, have a little look, being good with the ball with your, ball at your feet. That's bravery, but it's commitment mm. to the cause, the best of the football. The best tackle all day was the uh, Lovren one second half on Lukaku when he slides in and as you, and he actually he kept hold of the ball, stood up and passed it. Just like the it, beard, was, it was brilliant. Peter Beardsley sort of painted that in my football watching yeah. lifetime in the late 80s. He'd, he'd, he'd chase people down, slide, but with a hook so that yeah, they, yeah, were, that's they exactly went over. Yeah, he'd he, exactly balance, he'd bounce back up from it. But Everton's, what you're describing, that kind of, the kind of aggression, ball winning aggression, you want to see someone leaning forward when they win the ball. Like you can, I can visualise in my mind's eye at the moment, like a Lalana or a Chan as they, as they press into a challenge. Not sliding, you know, relying on timing to be absolutely yeah. perfect. And if you're not, you're going to injure the well, most, of, most of the time when you fly into tackles like that, where, where's the ball going? Yeah, the, exactly. Where's the ball going? Go Might, you. Make, yeah. oh, oh, they've got to throw in. Oh, what's, I mean, what have you achieved? Mm. And on that, it's, what, what? On that, the worst one for me is the is actually the Williams one on Chan's second half. And that, and the way the referee responded to it, because it looked like we had a mini break on and he pulled it. I thought he was just going to send them straight away. Mm. And I was quite quite surprised when he pulled the yellow card out. And in general, I there just... Was a, there was a really bad Ashley Williams one in the first half, which no one seemed to notice. Like, he, he, he flew in. No, it was a different... He flew in. He went studs up off the ground. And he won, He just won the ball and he didn't really go near the man. Or whoever it was managed to get out of the way. I don't. I can't remember who it was or when it. I think someone jumped particularly it was. And it was a way. terrible tackle. It was a, and it, well, the referee didn't even give a foul. And it was a genuinely terrible tackle. That if Firmino was in the way, he could honestly have broken his leg. And it's, it's and nothing's even been yeah, said nothing. about it. And it wasn't a foul. And no one. The weird thing to me is no one near me in the ground was like standing up and getting aggressive like other tackles were, which. It was a bit bizarre. Well, I have to say, I think the I think the one second half is straight red, and I think when you look at look at it back in the replays, there's no need for his legs to be where they are, and he's actually got decision making time within there. Uh, mm. He can, there's all sorts of stuff that he can do, but that to me felt like it was embodying something at three one. It was embodying the the we we're nowhere near good enough, but so this is what we have to do. We've got to leave one on them. Yeah, he didn't. Gareth didn't want to send someone anyone off, did he? He, did, he wanted to preserve the occasion, but it's a bit stupid with the way they approached it. And I have to say, we were taking the, uh, you know, <laughs> was Paul Senior's very sending for the echo. Yeah. I don't think we've ever sent. The echo was sold out yeah, yesterday. It was absolutely sold out, <laughs> left, right, and centre. Where the people, I mean, Kamal and Coutinho sent people lads to, to the echo in those goals. There's the Firmino <laughs> turn. There's Coutinho's bit where he puts Barkley literally on his ass. I, oh, that was just true, that was worth the admission alone. <laughs> <laughs> that was just glorious. That um, not enough of that in modern football yeah. for me. People being put on their ass. Yeah. It's a, yeah it's, I mean, it was a great shame that it was within Shaw's finest referee in it, but there's not that much that you can do about that now. But the referee for me has got to do more. And the man, the manager, the manager's made a couple of noises post match. He's not gone too far. I think at some point. And I think we'll know when, when, when the manager thinks we're properly in a title race because I think he might go too far at some point and you could see how pumped up he was at the end with it, Phil. And also he gets them in to calm them down as well. There was a lot of aggressive management from him yesterday. Yeah, I mean, the the, the one thing I'm really enjoying at the minute is when our bench needs to, they get right in the other bench's face. Like, the, um, there was one where I thought that, was it Krusevich, that his name is? Yeah. I thought he was actually going to dive past the uh, fourth official and start swinging. It was great. <laughs> was he the one that Cooman's moaning about? Yeah, yeah, that's the one he's talking about. Yeah, he, he, honestly, I thought he was going to go and kill Cooman at one stage. Did you see Klopp, Klopp in the post match? I love what he did. He was going. Um, they were trying to say, "Do you want to talk about the challenges and the refereeing?" And then he goes, "No, nope, I'm not going to. I'm not going to let you put my name in the headlines." And he, then he turns his eyes and looks straight to camera and goes, "But if you want to write it, write it." <laughs> <laughs> it were words to that effect. It was brilliant. And he goes straight to camera with it. Brilliant. Go ahead. <laughs> it was very good. That. Uh, okay, Liverpool then vastly superior to Everton. Uh, just quickly, man of the match, Rob. He, Jesus, tough. Um, it is tough. It is tough. It is tough I, without. I'm any... tempted to say Phil on balance. Thanks, mate. Phil Blundell. <laughs> um, Phil, I'm tempted to say Phil, comma on balance. <laughs> Phil Coutinho. 
But I could make a case for a lot of people. Uh, you know, if, uh, at the, okay, in the defensive side of it, it's it, it's it's a toss between Lovren and uh, and Lucas, and the inf- offensive side, it's a toss between Mane and uh, Coutinho. But I couldn't pick a I couldn't pick a winner. Um, Phil, I think it was Lucas. I think he was astonishingly good. I think he was absolutely fantastic. Like a genuine ten out of ten. Pretty much faultless. Won absolutely everything and stopped them from playing and put us on the front foot. Okay. Uh, pretty emphatic. Uh, nice to see from Phil there. Uh, all right, then. So the the way this has ended up then is the other results. Uh, United dropping points at home Brilliant. against West Brom. Um, we've got Bournemouth next. I think it's important, Rob, in the context of that Arsenal play Man City today. Uh, mm. And so no matter what happens there, you can argue that it's a good result for Liverpool. I think probably... Not necessarily a good result, but there's no bad one. There's certainly no bad result, really. Uh, but you, you may well have your preferences possibly be with, with the eye on the top four thing. We'll probably be draw followed by Manchester City win, followed by Arsenal win. I think we'd all broadly agree with that. Is that fair? I think if you say, I want to be top four with the best chance of Champions League football next season and you can play God, you want a City win. No pissing about a City win. Because I think a City win doesn't quite put Arsenal to bed, but it's a pretty close. I think, I think it does. Oh Yeah, then it's nine points. It's nine with points two with games. two games in hand. And... and United aren't far off being put to bed. So I think... I, I think there's a case for saying a, a City win is is that looking looking to our future and not messing around. That's that's the best result. But well, people, I, I, people listening to this will know what the result. I, know, I suspect them that United's um, league season hinges on what they do on Tuesday. Is it Tuesday night they play Everton? Yeah, it hinges on what they do on Tuesday. If they yes. if they don't get three points on Tuesday, they will give up because they they've basically got five games in the Europa League this season. If they they win. They win the if they win the Europa League, they win the Champions League. Are they anyway. in the quarters? Yeah, it's the quarter final. They're playing and in the quarter final. Well, the quarter the quarter final. There's the, not a ton of quality left. It's, the competition is so weak. It is. It's mad. It's, in incre- it's incredible season, how weak it yeah. is. Yeah. I think all four semi finalists would be in the running to be the best team in it this year. Well, they're odds like two it's, to one to win the. Play, no, it's it? six to four. Are you joking? They're, they're, but basically, the, the best way to put it up is but making odds. They're about. 20 is it 22 percent 20 20 21 percent something like that to get in the top four and they are 40 percent to win the europa league well, there you go so it's much more I mean, binary than our decision if last season. you're looking at um i think the team selection middlesbrough the other week was quite interesting because didn't play henry mkhitaryan yeah which given ibrahimovic was unavailable to also not play mkhitaryan if, if we're being honest their two best players are probably ibrahimovic and mkhitaryan and they chose not to play him mm. which to me, would say that there was an element of prioritise the Europa League two weeks ago. And now they've drawn it home to West Brom. It's not exactly going to lessen that, is it? No, I think it's. I think if you look right the way through, I think all the noises as well. It, to me, it's no surprise that Ferguson's coming out and saying what he's saying. And you do look at all the, you, you look at the games that they've got. No, Ferguson, oh, if the Ferguson's come out and said that he thinks that the best route in for them will be the Europa League. And I wonder if that's almost been a decision that they've all come together and made yeah. already. But with, we'll, we'll have a watch and brief. And that's why I think it's important. Forgetting what almost everybody else does. Um, but that's why I think it's really important that we, we back this win up. I mean, what are we, yeah, we, I mean, how many yeah. points we had? Are we six points ahead then? They've got two games in hand. Yeah, we're six points ahead of United. With two so games basically, if we, if we win and they fail to win this week, they've got, what, nine games left? And a... Uh, Seven point eight point gap to bridge. Yeah, it is very important to me when, when you look at these run-ins, and especially when you look at who they've got as well. They've yeah. still got to go to Arsenal. They've still got to play Chelsea at home. Man City. They've away. still got to go to Manchester City. Spurs. They've, Southampton. Go yeah, they got to go to Spurs. Southampton away isn't the easiest game to to you know. It's not a game you would hand pick. Even the fact that they're eleventh the and don't like they can score goals, you still wouldn't actively want to play Southampton. This is true. This is the interesting thing in the, in the run-in. I think. Uh, Liverpool have now completed the hard games. And, of course, the cynics will go, yeah, but Liverpool aren't so good in the bag as well. They're not not good in them. They'd still rather play Bournemouth at home than City at home. Have we basically got Stoke and West Brom and then six teams from the bottom ten? Is that right? We're away to Stoke, West Brom, Watford and West West Ham. Ham. And we're at home. home to Bournemouth. Sunderland, Bournemouth, no, no, Bournemouth, 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 Middlesbrough, sorry, Bournemouth, Southampton, and Palace. And Palace, so yeah, it is then, isn't it? Well, I mean, Palace won at Chelsea yesterday, and there is, you know, it's important to say that everyone, everyone can put, can 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 knock you and can can yeah. rattle you and all that. But that's why, as I say, it's that important that, for every that's that for for every team, every team. Though, team so. and that, but that's also why it's important to say you, we need to back this result up. We've got a home game on the Wednesday night. They've just had an intense South Coast derby, uh, also on the same day that we play. Then they've got to come all the way up to Anfield, Rob. Um, <coughs> Liverpool have got to back it up. They back it up with another three points on the board and then go to Stoke 
and said, you know, a point to be sort of all right at that stage at Stoke. You'd certainly take four points from Stoke and West Brom uh, together, if you know what I mean yep, right now. You would. So you've just got to, as I said, I think Wednesday night's an enormous game. I think that's where the manager was talking about it immediately yesterday. He knows now that another win puts the hammer down, puts pressure on absolutely everybody, begins to create the sort of buffer where, and this is what I think what Phil's, Phil's saying, where everyone begins to shrug the shoulders a bit and go, well, it just looks like it's too much. We've got other things to prioritise. Yeah, I, and I think it's important that, I think it's the time for Liverpool to be very calm here because we're not we're not, we're not not in a title race. So we don't need 2.5 ga- ga- points a game here. Two points a game, we'll do it. Getting to 75 points, we'll do it quite, well, 76 points, we'll do it quite comfortably. I, I'd like to see the team calm. Bournemouth can come and frustrate us and make a bit of a game of it. And if we have to take till 75, 80 minutes to get a 1-0, let that be the thing. And let no, no one think we have to turn up and, and thrash yeah. them and be in front by half time. I think, I think it's a time for, I think it's a time just to get points. Just get points. We, I know this seems really obvious. Let's take a point at Stoke if we have to. And, uh, and, and even in West Brom, just, just not lose games, I think, is, is almost my mantra. Yeah. Don't lose and we'll get enough points. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, there's, uh, there's, I mean, there is an opportunity to sort of kill the conversation by Easter. If, for instance, we if won- we if we win our, if we win our next three games, it's pretty much physically impossible for us to not come in the top four, as far as I'm concerned, because we'd have to then almost lose four games. I think. So that and that and also because you've got you've got to remember that we we're like we're six points ahead of United now. So United have to be six points. United basically have to be seven points better than us over the course of. What if they got ten games left? Yeah, that's a that's a huge with, huge ask with the games that they've got plus the Europa League campaign. Put that into perspective. That's as good as Chelsea, Tottenham would have to be basically that much better than Chelsea to win the title. And no one sat there going, "Yeah, they'll comfortably win the title." Well, United's two games at hand are as, as near as damn it. Literally, City City away and our oh, City at home, Arsenal away. City away. Oh, sorry, City away and Arsenal away. So that's that, but again, and even then, that's impossible for that to be a bad that's result. City away and Southampton away. City away and Southampton. Even away. if they man, if United do go out and beat City, yeah, that increases our chance of finishing in the top three. But no, but Neil, not in terms of the balance of games. It's not because they've got four of the top seven. I know, I know, to play. No, I know, I know, I know what I know what you're saying. I'm saying just literally in the games, of, yeah, the, yeah, the little literally, games literally, at hand that are being yeah. postponed. Is, sure, it is those two. If, you, if United actually having a proper run at the top four makes it. <laughs> Makes it more likely, we're going more to likely for us to come in the top three. Yeah, because of the because of the, take. they'd have to take points off um, Chelsea, Spurs. Well, they'd have to take points off Spurs and City away from home. away from home, mm. which is from our point of view not a bad. So thing. I, I, again, I just sort of sort of to, to sum the show up. I think that's one of the reasons. So you see, firstly, the manager comes out and he can't he can't talk about Wednesday quickly enough. Mm. But the next thing, Rob, as well, is that you, you, it reminded me a little bit, um, and I said it to Paco yesterday, it reminded me a little bit of the 0405 season when we played Everton in a very physical derby. Mm. And Benitez is on the pitch afterwards. And Benitez has been very reserved up to this point. And in the end, we, we, we go on and win the European Cup, but we do only come fifth. But it came, it felt like a massive thing with reference to the top four that we got that result when mm. Barros got himself sent off. Garcia was limping round up front because we used all our subs by half time. You know, it did, it felt yeah. huge at the time. Uh, there were other th- other factors in play, but if, if that's what you know. The manager's response yesterday. That's what that felt like to me. These have come here. They've tried to rough us up. We've got this because we've got this thing we need to sort out. And that's what, you know. The manager mm. himself knows. I think there and then how big that is. Getting the three points, not just a point, but the three points there against Evan. When you're looking to do this thing of coming in the top four. Yes, I think so. I mean, you slightly unhinged me by making the parallel to 0405 because we finished fifth. But then again, that season we had Europe to concentrate on, and I think that just dwarfed going to Crystal Palace away that you're going to Juventus and playing in the semi final. But yes, it was. I think I said actually before Everton that I'd almost take four points from Everton at Bournemouth, two home games. I think in the context of what we need to achieve this season, that'd be no bad thing. I think the win over it, even if we draw at home with Bournemouth, it'd be feel a bit of a body, but I don't. I think if, if it should happen, and there's no reason it should, but if it should happen, I'd like to see our heads not go on the back of that because I don't think it's the end of the world. But it, it just isn't. A no draw is the end of the world in, the, in our current position. We can go and get ourselves together and go and get a win at Stoke. And they were playing Wednesday, Saturday, and four points isn't disastrous. If we get six points, it feels massive in terms of actually securing Champions League football next season. I have to say, I'm seeing Marley as quite a big a variable here. I can't hide from that. I, I agree, but to play Bournemouth at home, you shouldn't. You should have enough about you to be able to cope with losing a player as, as undoubtedly brilliant as he as he is. But I I think it's your world class players are oh, yeah. most important in those. Oh, yeah, games. Oh, absolutely, one hundred percent. 
the, the, when, when, you, when you need a flat track bully yeah, and everyone else definitely. sinks down to their level, you've I, still got something. I think we'll see, I think we won't see Marnie at Bournemouth, but if I think almost no matter what happens, we probably won't see Marnie, Marnie at Bournemouth, even if he's broadly all right. I think yeah. we'll probably see him at Stoke. If he is all right, he probably just gets the week to, to heal up and sort himself out. And it might you can make the argument that he might be more used to us at, at Stoke as well. You'd like to think we'd have too much for Bournemouth. If you told me you could only play in one game of football, I would choose the one at Stoke. Mm, um, agreed. That's what we need. Like we, Liverpool need to get Mane back. They need to back this result up. It's very, very important indeed with reference to top four because why wouldn't you want to come and play Champions League football at Anfield under Jurgen Klopp with all of those 55,000 people around you, with the atmosphere that Liverpool can generate and just how basically brilliant it is to know that you're going to win every home derby. Um, if you're a footballer, what more can you ask? Liverpool beat Everton by three goals to one uh, and that flattered uh, a pretty dismal Everton side. Liverpool never really had to extend themselves. Long, long, long may this sort of thing continue.